This is the book of Psalm, chapter 22, verse 23. Ye that fear the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh praise him. All ye, the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye, the seed of Israel. Psalm 24 and 6. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah, which is they're, they're seeking the power of Jacob. We are seeking the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Now this is uh, Psalm 20 and 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, and we're coming into troubled times, but we must remember, as our forefather Jacob showed, be unflappable. And this shall be the conclusion uh, at the end. Okay, this has been a wonderful series and showing us how our forefather Jacob moved and things that he did and what he endured and how we're going to be able to endure in these troubling times and the way we must move and understand and remember the promise that our God gave unto our fathers to be our power to be our protection and our mighty and strong stay in the day of trouble, a mighty shield, exceeding great reward. We must remember this. Psalm 20 and 1. The Lord Yahweh, Bashim shall hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the power of Jacob, defend thee. And with that, given all praises, Glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father in whom the world has ignorantly called Jehovah or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son in whom the world has ignorantly called Jesus Christ in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers, a great millstone at a ruling well, and continue to do so, salutations, peace, and blessings unto the hundred and forty four thousand that govern in body, and to also the household of faith, the elect members, okay, consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets, and those that have faith. That will be calling upon that name, even the mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Savior, our doorway back unto the Father, so that we may sit among princes in heavenly places. And with that, giving double honors unto my apostles and elders that taught us this truth, a, that gave us the two most important things that we could ever know the apostles and elders at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so, that have given us and that was given unto them the name of our power and his anointed in our language, the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, the language of the heavens, so that we may have a conduit and a connection back unto our power and that we may have a middle man a mediator between us and our power, and that we can speak unto him freely in the spirit and know and understand that he is for us. And now that we have their names again, we must call upon those names and you will see the power thereof. For these be the names that are written. The name of the heavenly father is Yahweh. Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning exists or is or is to be. He is, he exists, he the existing one, for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name that is above every name given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first, and also to the believer consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith, they will be calling upon that name, even that mighty name, the name Yahabashai, Yah, meaning he, Habashai, meaning deliverer and savior. For that is exactly what he will come and do for the second time in physical form. Yet, 
as an angelic force, for we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. So, as I said, this is the conclusion of, as our forefather Jacob showed, be unflappable. Now, this is the book of Psalm, chapter 44, verse 4. Thou art my king, O power, command deliverances for Jacob. Now, Jacob's name is, is said all throughout the scriptures, even after the man, our forefather Jacob, had passed on and died, the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem El Shai referred unto his nation as Jacob because he loved Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob so much. He referred unto them in a good manner because he knew the promises that he had for us. But how much more for the elect of Jacob? Because Jacob's trouble is coming, but he, going into the elect, shall be saved out of it. Okay, goes to show you the love and compassion that the Lord has, not only for our forefather, but for his descendants after him that shall move in like manner as the man himself. Psalm 46 and 7, the Lord of hosts, which is armies, is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. It was so great that it was said two times in the same chapter. Psalm 46 and 11. The Lord of hosts, Yahweh Mashai of hosts, of armies, is with us. The power of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Okay? Psalm 47 and 4. He shall choose our inheritance for us, which is the land, and everything that makes us us. Our laws. The Lord being our power. Yahweh Shai being our mediator. The Lord have chosen these things out for us. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. Selah. See that? Now, I'm going to get this word for plain because it, it is known that our forefather Jacob was known as a plain man dwelling in tents. Completely opposite of Esau, who was a, a hunter and he was out in the wilderness. And he was cunning, but in a wicked, evil way, not cunning as in a clever or wise or sagacious way, like our forefather Abraham. But it goes to show you how different we truly are and how our forefather Jacob was. Plain man, but when you read plain in the English, oh, this is plain, you know, like plain Jane, but that word is very profound. It's, it's greater than you think it is when you go back to our language. The Hebrew. Now the word there is H or as thumb. All right. And it's found within the Hebrew. Okay. It's H 8,535. Thumb. Though it says Tam right there. The real pronunciation is thumb. Okay. And it means perfect. Com complete. Complete. Perfect. One who lacks nothing in physical strength, beauty, etc. Now, that's us as a people. We lack nothing. But under these curses, you know, we have fallen and become less than we were and what we are. But in a sense, as a nation, we're, we're a nation that lacks nothing in physical strength and beauty. We, we excel in everything we put our hands to, even in our lower state. It's a sound wholesome all right it says in ordinary but we're not ordinary we're extraordinary quiet sort of person and we are kind of a quiet people you don't mess with us we don't mess with you we keep to ourselves preferably but it's coming to a time where and we're gonna have to put you heathens down we're gonna have to put the wicked out okay because what you have done is too much and the power of jacob will fight for us he will defend us it says complete, morally innocent, having integrity. That's what hey, that's what I'm talking about. Having integrity. These are the characteristics we must uh, have, brothers and you sisters out there. We're a quiet sort of person. Yeah, people don't really know what we're about, but they know we're about the Bible and we move a certain way. And brothers are uh, beautiful and physically strong and we lack nothing. 
even though we may not have it all, so to speak, in this ugly world, we have it all in the world to come. And the Lord will bless us even in this time and give us our daily bread. All right. The Lord will open the heavens and pour upon us blessings. And also uh, the Lord daily loadeth us with benefits, as the scriptures state. It says one who is morally and ethically pure. Ooh, that's us. Lord is willing. It says perfect, undefiled, upright, plain. All right. It says pious which means you're for the Lord, gentle, which means you're of a higher class, dear, coupled together, perfect, undefiled, upright, complete. Okay. Now let me go to uh, the child D lexicon. I'm going to play this clip. It says, whole, upright, always in a moral sense, a peculiar use. All right, we're, we're a people of a peculiar use. All right, it says more. Uh, it says uh, to indicate the milder and placid disposition of Jacob, as opposed to the more ferocious character of Esau. All right, my perfect one, an endearing term for a beloved uh, female, and we know that Israel is known as a delicate and, and comely woman before the Lord. But the nation of Israel stemmed from the loins of this man, even Jacob. All right. So we're beloved. All right. As, as David's name is beloved. OK. And we know. <laughs> and if you can receive it, Jacob is David. Peter. OK. Uh, Zerubbabel. Moses. If you can receive it, because reincarnation does exist. Why do you think history repeats itself? Because the same people come back. We're just in a different age or time or era. That is it. And that is all. So without further ado, I'm going to play this clip. And we're going to continue on. But let me get uh, this right here in Psalm 75 and 9. But I will declare forever. I will sing praises to the power of Jacob, the God of Jacob. Psalm 77 and 15, thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, which is the heavenly host, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, because Joseph's sons were included into the tribes. All right. Which goes to show you the power that Jacob had when he blessed Joseph's sons. Manasseh and Ephraim, but making Ephraim the greater. Okay. Which Joseph thought uh, Jacob was making a mistake, but he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I know what I'm doing through the spirit, through the power that the Lord bestowed upon him. So, without further ado, enjoy this clip. Shalom. My people, and I can no longer hide in the desert while they suffer at your hands. So, you have returned only to free them. God. Neither will I let your people go. Ramesses, please, you must listen. I will not be the weak link. Tell your people, as of today, their workload has been doubled, thanks to your God. Or is it thanks to you. And it goes to show you that you see how the workload doubled. Same happened with Jacob. He worked for Rachel for seven years, but you know, Laban was real slick with it and said, We don't marry the younger daughter before the older. So he gave him Leah, 
Then Jacob worked another seven years for Rachel. All right. And then he worked, I think, another seven years for, uh, you know, his substance, his cattle and things of that nature. So it goes to show you that our, just as Jacob became rich and great and strong after his labors, Israel became a great nation within captivity. Okay. Just as Joseph became great when he was uh, imprisoned in Egypt. So it just goes to show you that the more we're afflicted, the greater we are. See, Jacob earned his keep. Got a lot of these clowns talking about he stole something from Esau. Esau is a clown, a lazy piece of shit. He's nothing. All right? But Jacob, he earned to be uh, uh, the firstborn. He earned that right. He obeyed his parents when Esau didn't obey. He married the Canaanites when... Uh, Specifically, Isaac and Rebecca was like, no, nah, don't do that. But it goes to show you, when you really get into it, Jacob was always that one. He was always that guy. He was always the beloved of the Lord. And it goes to show you that Jacob is so important that, that he's uh, stated in the end of one age and the beginning of a new. Esau is the end of one age, and Jacob is the beginning of a new age. It just goes to show you how important Jacob is is and was all right and how the lord loves our people that stem from the loins of jacob okay that's why there's a promise unto abraham isaac and jacob psalm 78 and 5 for he established a testimony which the testimony of mashiach is the spirit of prophecy in jacob and appointed a law in israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. See that? The Lord only done that with us. Of all the families of the earth, the Lord have only known us. That's why he punishes, punishes us for our iniquities because we are his sons. We are his children. Okay? He's like, hey, from this day forward, your people's workload is doubled. Thanks to your God. Or perhaps, thanks to you. So it goes to show you yeah, thanks to our power, our power is making us great in the midst of these temptations and trials and labors. And we're going to be great. And he even says that the elect, beginning with them, and then is going to stem down to all our nation coming forth in, in, in the generations and, and in time uh, being in the kingdom. But it said the elect, his elect will, sh will long enjoy the work of their hands. So it goes to show you, just as Jacob, he worked those years. And, and he received of his labor. Okay. That's the spirit. Now we don't get when uh, Jacob uh, passed away. How how great Jacob was that even the Egyptians mourned for him. Because without Jacob raising Joseph. And really all the patriarchs. But without him raising his sons the way he did. Preferably uh, one of his sons being Joseph. Egypt would have been destroyed, devastated by the famine. But it was Joseph that understood Pharaoh's dream. And it was the God of Jacob that put the dream into Pharaoh's mind to know that these things would surely come to pass. All right. Yes. So you know it's Shatan, man. It ain't even popping up. Shatan, make a mud. Let's get it again. Okay, here we go. All right. Genesis 50 and 1. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him because uh, Jacob had died after he blessed uh, the tribes and after he told them what shall befall them in the last days. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father and the physicians embalmed Israel, and forty days were fulfilled for him, for so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians, which is Mizraim, the Hamites, mourned for him three score and ten days, seventy days. All right, now this is this is not even an Egyptian. This is the father of Joseph, a Hebrew. But it goes to show you how great jo uh, Jacob was. In the sight of the Egyptians, because he birthed Joseph, that the the, the Egyptians Mizraim adored, because without him, Egypt would have been devastated by the famine. 
Okay? Pretty much Joseph was the ruler over the world. All nations had to come up to Egypt for grain. But it was not an Egyptian that they had to come into contact with. Because Pharaoh, he was ruler in name only. But it was Joseph who the people seen. And best believe you know that he was a Hebrew. All right? Now, uh, it reads on, verse 4. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, which is look, O English word for look, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan, our land, Israel, the promised land. There shalt thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury thy father according as he made thee swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, and all the house of Joseph, and his brethren, and his father's house, only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen. And it was a very great company. Imagine that. A marching into the land of Canaan. All right. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned. Now let's get this word Atad real quick. Uh, what is it? So Genesis 50. I'm going to word it, Todd. There we go. This is spiritual. Huh? This is the conclusion of it, but and this is the burial of, of Yaqua, Jacob, Yahasha Allah, whose name was changed to Yahasha Allah. Now, this is the word. Uh, ah, Tad, Atad, H three hundred and twenty nine, Atad, and it means a bramble, a thorn, a buckthorn, a threshing, meaning thorn, also called Abel Mizraim, and afterwards called Beth Hogla, was located on the west of Jordan between the Jordan and Jericho. <laughs> Now it says Abel Mizraim, which we know Mizraim is, is Egypt, and Abel is uh is like Abel, which is like transitory. So the place was pretty much Jacob was like a transitory person that was in Egypt. He was there and then he was gone. They're like there, go go uh, you know so to speak, a thorn, but hence a thorn in 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 uh, Mizraim's side. Yeah, yeah, because it yeah. Uh, Israel would be that in time to come, all right? Because them keeping Israel there, as the Lord said, Israel is my firstborn, let him go. And, you know, the Pharaoh at the time didn't let Israel go. And Israel became a thorn in the side of the Egyptians because the Egyptians were plagued and Israel was not. It says a bramble, a thorn. Pretty much they they, they tried to touch the apple of the Lord's eye and it only pricked them. Uh, in the end, but this particular Pharaoh during the time of Joseph loved Joseph and his people, our people, the Israelites. But uh, the uh, the Pharaoh that would come in time did not know of Joseph and did not like our pe people. Now you have this word Beth Hogla. I want to get what that means: buckthorn, bramble, thorn. It's the place where they buried Jacob. Buckthorn. All right. So uh, Beth. Hogla. Let me get that. Can I get that? Let me see. Bear with me, brothers. Let's see here. No. Beth Hogla. Hmm. See if I can put it in. Does it even come up? Let me see. May not. I don't know. But I know Beth is by Yath's house. Beth. Hogla. Beth 
whole blah. There it is, the border one. Okay. There it is. Twada Yabashima Shai. Alright, now let's get what it means. And we're gonna keep reading. Beth Hogla. Baya. Ha. Chag. La. Baya. Chagla. House. Of pi uh, partridge. Place of partridge. House of partridge. Damn. Define. Partridge says a short tailed game bird with mainly brown plumage, native to Eurasia, which is the where our land is. Part partridge. So it's an actual bird, but it's spiritual because they're known as a speckled bird. All right. Partridge in the uh. In a pear tree represents Yahweh the son of God. Hey, so I guess it's a representation of Mashiach. That's the spirit then, I guess. The partridge in a pear tree represents Yahweh the son of Yahweh. Okay, that's it. So when Jacob was buried, represented a... Uh, Pretty much a down the line, the son of man would come through him. Yahweh Shai. Uh, let's see here, is there any more? What is the portrait considered? What is a holy bird? Which is probably a dove. Yep, a dove. Yep. Uh, what is the origin of the word partridge? What is the partridge considered? Yes, okay. Trace back to Sanskrit. Where are they? Hey, that's spiritual. Just as um Jacob was taken out of Egypt to Israel, the Lord on eagles' wings would lead our people out of Egypt, even though that old generation died for their disbelief. He would lead our people back into the land. Just as Jacob was taken back into the land and buried. Israel was taken back into the land as a people, all right, by uh, by the chariot, which is uh, known as the, by eagle's wings. The Lord guided us. And it also, the partridge represents Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai is the one that led us out of Egypt. How about that? Hey, see, you just going, you know, when you go and break things down, it is what it is. Okay. Okay, and we already know that uh, Yahweh Shai was the bread that rained from heaven. We ate it of that bread. See, we're eating of Yahweh Shai. It says the finest eating of all British game birds. Okay, and we know British goes back to men of the covenant. Uh, bar, uh, Barayath Hayash, man of the covenant. Quail, ooh, there it is. That's what rained in the world. I knew it was quail. Would have been in the same category. The partridge is a symbol for the Messiah. I wish I had my shock. So this goes to show you, it says a pear tree is the cross upon which Yahusha offered up the gift of his life for the salvation of the world, the world of Israel. And that's it. That's it. Okay. Like a partridge that hatches eggs, she has not laid. So are those who get their wealth by unjust means. Yeah, it does mention partridge in different spots and places. But as, as we read, is a representation of Mashiach. And I believe that the pear tree is where they mainly lodge. And that was the same uh wood or tree that was cut down has made those beams for the for the cross 
for the execution of Roman uh, male factors or whatever. It just, so it's just spiritual. But just as J uh, Jacob was taken to this particular spot and buried, hey, we were taken out of Egypt just as uh, Jacob was. It was taken back to the land of Israel, Canaan at the time. So that just goes to show you. All right. A place in Benjamin on the border with Judah. That's it. Whew. Yeah. So let's go back to the script and uh, we'll be closing out soon. All right. Not bad. Uh, it reads... Uh, where we at? I'll read verse nine again. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, which is the Canaanites, the Canaanites saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous morning to the Egyptians. Now, that's how you know Israel looked just like the Egyptians. Okay? So, you know, ugly ass Edomites. Yo, you clowns wasn't Egyptians until the time of Ptolemy. And that was the Greek era. That was hundreds of years down the line. From this point, a, a few thousand years. All right? Down the line. So, it wasn't y'all clowns. All right. And that's how, how Moses passed for an Egyptian. All right. It says. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites saw the morning in the floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous morning to the Egyptians. Wherefore, the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan, which is Israel, and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place of Ephron, the Hittite, before Mamre. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And that's pretty much uh, it. You know, it is what it is. See how the Egyptians mourn for, for Jacob. He wasn't even an Egyptian. He was a Hebrew. He was our forefather. Okay? A man known to be unflappable. And through all, all the, you know, all his trials in his life, from the ups and the downs to certain things that men might have, you know, hearts would have failed them for. He showed himself to be unflappable, serene. And let me get that word real quick. Bear with me. All right, Shalom, I'm mocking my back. The word serene, which is also a synonym for unflappable. It says, calm, peaceful, and untroubled, tranquil. See that? That's it. That's how he was in different in difficult situations and chaotic situations was our forefather Jacob. That's pretty much it. Ended there, giving all praises, glory and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai being the name of his only begotten Son. All praises, glory, and honor be unto them always, indefinitely. From generation to generation, double honors unto my apostles and elders at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto the 144,000, all right, the governing body, and also to the believers, that body of faithful and chosen and predestined souls that will cleave heavily through faith unto the name of Yahweh, Wai, Yahweh Shai, and call upon them in times of trouble, and be delivered and saved in these times to come. Double honors unto my teachers that learn from their teachers the glorious name of the Heavenly Father, 
which is Yahweh, and the glorious name of his only begotten son, which is Yahweh Shai. Double honors unto them as it is written. Double honor unto them that continue in the ministry. Salutations, peace, and blessings unto you, brothers, continuing to fight this good fight of faith. And to you, sisters, doing that which is becoming of women. Shalom to those that are addicted unto this ministry. I say, Shalom. On to the next one. I might have to jump up into this thing, going into the current events, but I wanted to, you know, continue this series because in these troubling events, we have to move, as our forefather Jacob showed us, being unflappable in all these situations. So I'm gonna jump back into, you know, everything's been going on a lot. Signs in the heavens, you already know, Luke 21, uh, Matthew 24, things of that nature, uh, Isaiah 19, you know, the armada of ships that have been seen. All right, then you have the signs in the heavens, the perplexity upon nations, wars, rumors of wars, these things. So, hey, I'll catch you in the next one, and we're going to go and dive deep into everything that's going on, for it is written. So with that, I say shalom on to the next one. Shalom.